Retinal detachment. My ophthalmologist dilated my pupil, told me I have a retinal detachment and that I'll need surgery, and that this surgery has to be urgent. But I didn't really understand what exactly is a retinal detachment, why did it happen, and why do I need to have surgery so quickly? My name is Dr. Felipe Lucado. I'm here with you once again to talk about various topics related to retinal surgery and cataract surgery. And the goal of these videos I make here on my channel is to guide you if you've received a diagnosis and didn't quite understand the situation and have trouble when you get home and want to explain to your family, to your children, what happened to you and why you need treatment. So, this mini lesson for the patient here is to explain everything in detail so you can understand your problem. Let's get started. This here is a photo, a retinography. It's a picture of the back of the eye where we can see the retina. We can see the central part. That yellowish spot right in the middle is called the optic nerve, and it's the nerve responsible for our vision. From it, the blood vessels branch out, both arteries and veins. That darker area right in the center is called the macula, and it's responsible for our central vision. But the entire orange part at the back of the eye is the retina, and the retina is what allows us to see. The periphery of our visual field is also determined by the periphery of the retina. And here, I'm showing a photo of a detached retina, a total retinal detachment. You can see there are folds in the retina, there's fluid underneath it, and this patient with a total retinal detachment has a very significant loss of vision. So, why does retinal detachment happen? Well, more specifically today, I'm talking about regmatogenous retinal detachment. There are several types of retinal detachment, but regmatogenous detachment is the one that's associated with a retinal tear, a break in the retina. Looking here in zoom, in more detail, I can see that this tear is horseshoe shaped and it's a single tear, but sometimes there's more than one tear, sometimes the tear is larger, sometimes it's in another location. So, whenever I talk about regmatogenous retinal detachment, it's always associated with a tear in the retina. But people always ask me, Doctor, why did this tear happen in my retina? I didn't get hit. I didn't have any trauma. There was nothing unusual in my history and suddenly this just happened. I'll explain this in more detail in a moment. Here's a drawing showing the eyeball and the retina. Imagine the retina as if it were wallpaper covering the entire back of the eye. But our eye isn't empty, it's not hollow. Inside the cavity, at the back of the eye, we have a gel called the vitreous. This gel is transparent and it's quite dense when we're born. It's completely attached to the back wall. It's fully adhered to the retina. And with the aging process, this happens to everyone, to 100% of the population. The vitreous undergoes changes that make it more liquid. So, it starts to form some pockets of fluid inside it in a natural process called vitreous sign resis. And from vitreous sign resis, these pockets start to merge and the vitreous becomes softer. The result of this is that sometimes we start to see some opacities floating inside this gel, which cast shadows on the retina. So, we see some floaters, little black dots, some translucent lines that look like a spider web. Some patients say it looks like a protozoan. It moves around and seems like it's floating inside the eye. This is part of the process of vitreous liquefaction and posterior vitreous detachment. When it becomes more liquid, it tends to want to detach from the back wall of the eye. So, little by little, this vitreous starts to detach from the retina until it comes off completely. This is a process called posterior vitreous detachment, which is benign and, in most cases, doesn't cause any problems. So, what's the big problem then? Some people have something called anomalous vitreoretinal adhesion. What does that mean? It means the vitreous is more stuck than normal at the base of the retina. So, the vitreous tries to detach from some area of the retina and has trouble doing so. It creates traction, and it can cause excessive traction in certain spots on the retina, which can be dangerous. Sometimes, this also happens because of weaknesses. For example, patients with high myopia sometimes have degenerations in the peripheral retina, where the retina is thinner and more likely to develop holes or retinal tears. So, continuing here with our animation, the vitreous, stuck to the base of the retina and pulling excessively, can cause a tear or a break. So here we can see that when the vitreous started to detach from the base of the retina, it pulled a little tear there and created a horseshoe-shaped break, as we see in this illustration. And that's why it's so important that when we have symptoms like an increase in floaters, or another symptom called photopsia, we quickly see an ophthalmologist. 
because if you start seeing too many floaters that you weren't seeing before, or if you start seeing flashes of light, even with the lights off, sometimes you see something like a lightning bolt or a flash that can be dangerous. This could be a sign of vitreous traction at the base of the retina, and it may or may not be associated with a retinal tear. And why do you need to see an ophthalmologist quickly if you have an increase in floaters or photopsias? Because if a tear in your retina is identified during the exam, without any area of detachment, just a tear, we have the chance to treat it with a laser, without needing a surgical procedure. Right there in the office, with your pupil dilated, we use a special lens and a special laser to seal off the area of the tear. That will form a scar and prevent your retina from detaching. When the tear is very large or when the patient didn't see the ophthalmologist in time, there's a risk that the tear could worsen. So, the fluid inside the eye passes into the space beneath the retina, and then the retina starts to detach. From the peripheral area, fluid starts to seep in and the retina begins to come loose. And this detachment is much easier. It tends to progress. So, it's small at first, but it progresses as the area of detachment increases, and if it reaches the central part of your vision, the macula, it can get worse and your vision can deteriorate a lot. This is what we call a macula off retinal detachment. When the retina is detached but the macula is still attached, we call it macula on. Here is a video from the European Society of Retina in vitro, showing that we always identify the tear. And there are several ways to treat it, whether by placing a band, performing a surgery called vitrectomy, or with a gas injection known as pneumatic retinopexy. But all these surgical technique details I'll explain more in other videos here on the channel. This here is an example of a drawing of a regmatogenous retinal detachment with a single superior tear in the macula still on. This patient has normal reading vision, but sees a spot, and the retina perceives things in reverse. If the detachment is at the top, the spot will appear at the bottom. Here, an inferior detachment with two tears and also macula on. This patient can also read, but has a spot that starts to grow from top to bottom. With an inferior detachment, the spot appears in the upper visual field, it's the opposite. And why does the surgery have to be so urgent? The retina is made up of neurons, just like our brain. The nerve cells in our body, whenever they get injured, whenever there's damage to nerve cells, there's a high chance of leaving lasting effects. So when we operate on a macula on retinal detachment, we have the chance to treat the detachment before it involves the macular region, and there's a great chance we can solve the problem with surgery and the patient will have no after effects with completely normal vision. When the detachment is macula off, but for a short period, especially within the first three days, we also have the chance to treat this patient and they may have minimal or even no lasting effects on their vision, continuing to see completely normally. We know that a detached retina gradually loses its function over time. So when we take too long, especially in those cases where it takes more than 10 days to operate, there will be some level of lasting effect. We can improve vision with surgery, the retina reattaches, but sometimes this increases the chance of having some sequelae and also increases the likelihood of needing more than one surgery to solve the problem. That's why it's an ophthalmological emergency to resolve a retinal detachment as quickly as possible. I hope this video was helpful for you. Share it with your family members, send it to your children, or to a neighbor, or anyone who might need some guidance about retinal detachment. And I truly believe that information empowers patients to work in synergy with the medical team. So if you've watched this video but still have questions, book an appointment, talk to your doctor, and get your questions answered. When you understand the problem you have and know what you need to do to treat it, you work in synergy so your treatment starts to succeed even before surgery. If you have any questions, send me an email or a direct message here through Dr. Felipe Licato on Instagram or YouTube, and we can chat more. See you next time.